Okay. So good afternoon. Hi there. And welcome to today's show. I am Gina Fidelity of Embracing Imperfect. And uh, today we are going to talk about, um, I'm going to talk about, and anyone who wants to jump in, feel free, uh, talking about the time when you're in the valley, you're waiting for something to happen. Uh, so this is something, uh, hi, <laughs> something I'm really familiar with because, um, as you know, my kids have disabilities that I believe can be healed through various techniques. And right now, both my kids are battling candida. And when you have candida, it's a long, it could be like a year to heal it before any other protocol can really work on them. Uh, so I'm in this time in a valley and, um, I thought I would kind of talk about it because I think one of the huge frustrations for me is that, and, and I think for all of us, right? So you feel like you're going through something and you feel like you're growing and you're learning and you're changing and yet things don't get better. And so you get really frustrated. I don't know about you, but I do. <laughs> you get really frustrated. You feel like, you know what? There's nothing more I can do. I'm doing everything I can. I, um, and, and sometimes that means that there isn't any more you can, that there are things more you can do, uh, but you don't have the time or the money or the proper doctor or the proper resources or whatever you is ne you need to go to the next level with whatever you've got. So um, this was something that I've uh, spent a lot of time thinking about and praying about lately because uh, I feel like a lot of that's going on. Now, I know part of it is this stage of my life. I know that when you're in menopause, and it seems to me true for me, that you get this kind of abundant energy of, I want things to be better, and I want to excel, and I want to perform. And, uh, you know, I've been able to do that at my gym, um, which I'm very blessed to be at Soldier Fit. And I've been able to do that to a level where I've got a body better than I've ever had in my life, even though I'm 53. So woohoo, that's cool. Um but it's also spurred me on to want to do better in other things like, and, and, you know, fitness has spurred me to want to be a better parent and be a better wife and uh, be better in health and nutrition and be better at my business and all these other things. So I'm trying to work everything hands in hand, but sometimes as far as you go and as much as you go, um, you are still in this valley. So I got to thinking about, well, why am I still in the valley? When, uh, hi, Emma, Emmy, how you doing? Um, why am I still in this valley when I am working so hard to climb that mountain, um, to get up over that hill? And I think it's because, uh, the only reason it seems to me that I can say is that it must be more for me to learn. There must be more for me to improve, perfect, and sharpen before I'm really able to be used in my purpose. <laughs> uh, Tina says, I completely agree. Okay. So I thought of this for a minute and I was funny because I know I usually share on these Bible stories. They're definitely Bible stories that are, um, apropos for this, but, um, Honestly, when I thought about what was I going to talk about, one of my very favorite movies in the world actually addresses this issue quite well, believe it or not. Um, I am a huge Bill Murray fan. I am so excited that Bill Murray is doing a new zombie movie. Hi, Becky. How are you doing? And I can't wait to see it. So that's how big a Bill Murray fan I am. But um, one of my favorite movies of all time is Groundhog's Day. And uh, it's, it's, I can watch that over and over. You know, when they put that up in a Facebook meme, what's a movie that you can watch over and over and never get tired of? Well, that's definitely one of those movies. So um, I'm hoping that everyone who listens to this has seen it, but just a really quick recap. Uh, Bill Murray is a news reporter. He goes up to Puxatawney to see Puxatawney Pete, uh, Phil, Puxatawney Phil, uh, the groundhog. Um, and he's very like New York and he hates the small town and he thinks this is a stupid gig. Um, and he goes up there with his producer and his cameraman and they um, they go through the thing and he's like, it's such a drag. I just want to get home. This big snowstorm's coming and we're going to be stuck here. And he's annoyed about it and he's upset. And he wakes up the next morning and what happens is he's stuck in the same day. It's Groundhog's Day once a day again. And the whole movie is his journey to get out of the loop of being in Groundhog's Day. But as you watch the movie, you realize that he's stuck in the movie, in Groundhog's Day, like years and years and years and years. <laughs> 
Like, because in the middle of the movie, like, for example, he goes from not knowing how to become, how to play piano to be like concert piano level accomplishments, right? So um, he's stuck in that same day for years. And as you watch the movie, it's interesting because it's such a great metaphor for life when we're stuck in something that never seems to get better, right? Things don't seem to get better. And the first thing you do is, well, like, well, screw it. I'm going to do, I'm going to just going to make the most of it. Me, 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 me. I'm going to take care of me. So he tries that route and that it's still stuck in it. And then he tries to like kill himself. So he goes through the despair phase and hopefully I'm hoping that nobody here has tried who's gotten that much of despair that they ever attempted to take their life. But um, you can get really far down in despair and depression when things don't seem to improve. Uh, but again, he keeps waking up the next day. So it's a really good metaphor for every day is a new opportunity. Um, and then he gets to this point where he tries to get the girl. He goes, he tries to improve himself enough to get the girl. And he's still really too selfish. And then he goes to a point where he's doing things for other people, but it's not enough. And finally, at the end of the movie, he gets to the point where he has not only grown so much that he's doing everything to help everybody else, but he's just, he's... Um, it's really changed him at his heart level. And I think that's a good metaphor. That can, I'm just laughing because I must be super deep in the valley if my uh, <clears throat> example that came to mind is somebody who lived the same day for probably like a hundred years. <laughs> uh, but it does feel like that sometimes, honestly. And so I think that um, that's, yeah, you need to get up and try it again to the point where you have learned everything you need to do um, to be a better person. And it goes by inches. Like, so that's that's the unfortunate part. It does go by inches, but you need to allow yourself grace. Um, you need to be grateful for the inches that you get um, and you're gonna backslide. So there are gonna be days when you're just throwing in the towel or you get to a certain point and that like yesterday I threw in the towel at a certain point. I had a pretty good day for the first half and then I threw in the towel. Um, you know, and then, and then part of what you might be held up might be, uh, the people or the resources around you are not where they need to be. So that can be, you know, you need to learn to go through that. You need to learn a whole lot of things. So again, like just watch Groundhog's Day and you see how he emerges little by little at the end of the movie, he is not just not that horrible, you know, small towns are stupid and I can't even get a decent cup of coffee guy that he was at the beginning. He is literally the town hero. And um, it's he gets the girl just because he's that good a guy. And he um, he just makes the most of everything. He's taught that by the end of the movie. And so I think that's something that we need to think about. We need to be thinking about like, okay, this is not right yet. I'm not there yet. And we need to give ourselves grace for not being there. Um, now, if you do want a biblical story, <laughs> you could go back in uh, Genesis to the story of Joseph, um, who was, Joseph was, uh, I think it was 17 years. Um, he was a very godly kid, but he was a little full of himself and high minded. And he went from being like in a prison and being falsely accused uh, to being the number two person in all of Egypt over everything right under Pharaoh. Uh, but it took 17 years and a lot of those years in prison. And this was a good, innocent guy. Um, he needed to be shaped by all those years in prison. Right. So when we think about this stuff. We think about we need to be shaped by, I, and I'm sorry, but this is the truth. Real growth only happens with terrible crap, <laughs> right? Like things can be wonderful and you'll be grateful and you might grow a little bit, but the real deep down uh, true growth that brings us to excellence, that makes us stronger um, is the stuff that really, really hurts. It's the stuff that's really, really hard. And we need to get through that. Uh, to shape us. So when you're going through an extended long period of like what I'm going through with my daughter, it's been uh, two and a half years and it's just an ugly, this, this gut issue is just, it's not improving. Um, 
I'm looking at it like, what am I supposed to learn through this, right? Uh, I have gone and done the due diligence of this is what I think I need to help her and heal her and I can't accomplish it right now. So I'm in this valley waiting to get to the other side of the road, which I can't get to yet. So I have to look at it. It's very easy for me to drop into despair over it, but I have to look at it like, why? Um, what is, what am I learning? What am I meant to be learned and shaped into? Um, patience, obviously, is going to be one of those things. Why is this taking so long? And why can I not make that jump? Um, and I will tell you that I'm thinking this, I've already just in the last few weeks, learned some things, things that I did not do right, things that I didn't um, plan for properly, things that I didn't stand up for properly, and all these things along the way. And uh, you're going to be saying, well, Bruce, you can't be perfect. And sometimes it feels like that. It feels like, <laughs> oh, I've got to be perfect. And no, you don't have to be perfect. You don't. But you do have to learn those lessons on, along the way. So that's that's not perfection. That's just learning. What am I not, what did I not see that can make this a better thing for me? So I think um, when we are down in the valley, <laughs> it's no other term for, I live in a place called the valley. <laughs> I actually, um, when I wrote the, uh, when I wrote the uh, little caption to this, I spoke it into the mic and it capitalized the valley because that's where I live. <laughs> but when we are in a valley area in our life, um, and we have to do a couple of things. The first thing is don't give up hope. Like, and I had, I did that. I did that for a while. And that was a lesson I had to learn. I had to learn how not to give up hope when that thing seems so dark on far away in the distance. And when you don't have those resources and tools in place and you can't get them right now that will help you solve this issue, you have to, I, I think it was a test for me not to lose hope and how to bring back the hope, even though I couldn't do it right now. So that was one part of it that, you know, so it's really important to hang on to your hope. Um, and it's important to learn what is it that look at it like an object lesson. What is it that I can learn right here? And then whenever you learn something, you really have to try and apply it. So, uh, you know, I'm learning patience. So where can I ab apply patience that I haven't been applying patience in? Because patience is, uh, I, I mean, uh, anyone who's a parent knows that patience is, uh, it's kind of a lifelong learning game. <laughs> Because you have patience. First, you have to have patience for your screaming baby. Then you need to have patience for your crazy toddler. <laughs> then you need to have patience when dealing with the school system. And then, and then puberty and teenage years bring a whole different level of patience, right? So you need to learn all those different aspects of patience. And then, but then you need to apply them. So when you're in the valley, just just keep up your hope. Um, just keep up. Look at it like an object lesson of, okay, I can't get there, but what can I learn? What can I do while I'm here? What can I learn? Um, how can I just try to make this better? And then I think finally you need to, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I did that uh, Facebook Live on how to have joy, contentment, and happiness. It's Those are all choices. <laughs> uh, they're blessings and they're choices. And try to figure out when you're down in that deep, dark valley, how can I get to happiness or joy or contentment in the moment. Uh, that is probably for me the biggest challenge. Um, I'm really working hard on doing that. It's not always easy, uh, but allow yourself to have some moments of grace in your life while you're down in the darkness, not uh, knowing how this is going to end, whether it's, uh, you know, a disease, a disability, a financial issue, a joblessness issue. Uh, you know, those are really hard issues. I feel like we've been dealing with all of them. Um, so just, uh, hi, Chris, let yourself, uh, you know, have some joy and contentment while you are down there in the valley. And, uh, you know, go ahead and look up the Joseph store if you like, or just rent a copy of Groundhog's Day <laughs> and watch it. Um, because I think it's, uh, it's a really great lesson, that movie. And um, if you haven't seen it, please do see it. <laughs> so that's it for me today. Uh, like I said, you had a rocky day, but um, powering through and um, learning to enjoy where I'm standing, where, where I am right now. So 
that's it for me. And if you liked this video, um, you can share it with your friends. Um, I'll be putting it up on YouTube in the next week. And uh, if you have a topic that you'd like me to cover next week, I will do that. So uh, I'm wishing you well in this week. I hope you had a lovely 4th of July. And if you didn't, that's okay. You don't have to celebrate every holiday. <laughs> um, you can definitely take a we kind of took a snooze through a holiday yesterday and watched our neighbor light off fireworks um which was great because my daughter who used to be she when she was little she couldn't even be near the window on the fourth of july she would cry the whole day um because of her sensory issues and now she was out there she had her we had her in a seat and they were shooting fireworks and we were getting <laughs> like the ash was coming down on us and she was just like Oof. And she was fine watching them. My other daughter was like, oh, I don't like this ash stuff. I'm standing in the corner. <laughs> but, um, you know, and the fireworks are real close, as you can imagine. So uh, she did really good with them. So that's always a blessing because it was such a long way from where she came when she was little. So I have to always, that was a little um, reminder to me that there is hope and she has improved over the years. Um, just because she's going through something difficult right now doesn't mean it won't go away one day, uh, especially when we have the resources to really fight it uh, at hand. So that's it for me. I hope you have a great day. I hope you have a great holiday weekend if you're still celebrating. And uh, remember uh, to embrace the imperfectly, the imperfect within you as you uh, conquer these hills and uh, travel through these valleys. And, you know, God is with you. Um, and he will get you through if you just hold his hand. Okay. Well, thanks a lot. Have a great day. And I will see you next Friday. If you have a topic you'd like me to cover, go ahead, shoot it. And uh, we'll get there soon. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>